Hi, I'm Stephen Berlin, and tonight I would like to talk about transcendent states of consciousness accessible through dreams. And uh, that's something we obviously experience every night on this, our magic carpet, the bed. And uh, by transcendent states of consciousness, I mean deeper and higher dimensions of experience. Now, mankind has devised all kinds of ways, some effective, uh, to uh, facilitate getting to these uh, states of consciousness. Uh, offhand, I'd say uh, meditation, uh, sensory deprivation, uh, religious uh, practices such as rhythmic chanting, uh, hallucinogenic drugs, and then inadvertently sometimes a trauma like near-death experiences and uh, psychosis even. Now, uh, when I started putting transcendent dreams in my uh, dream journal and became more and more aware of them, I realized I had to come up with some kind of criteria for what transcendence would be. And so I came up with the following, and for a dream to be transcendent, it pretty much, well, I can always add to this list, I suppose. I've come up with uh, colors so uh, vivid that they convey an enhanced spectrum, uh, music that I hear that uh, seems to be from octaves uh, which exceed the capability of any human voice or instrument, uh, emotions so intense that they cause for me what I can best describe as an orgasm of the heart, and then there's uh, views of events in history that are kind of uh, all-encompassing in their comprehension, and then uh, last but not least is the uh, exquisite uh, light in which all form dissolves, and uh, and in, and that light is almost always accompanied by a love, a sense, a wave, uh, a pulse of love that uh, is uh, so immediate and penetrating that uh, nothing else but that can abide at that moment. So anyway, uh, now I've had a very high transcendent experience that I would stack right up there with Saul on the road to Damascus. And uh, however, I'm not going to talk about that today because I want to start with two of my lesser dreams of transcendence because they convey the creativity of the dreaming mind in, in presenting things to us. And so I need to get to it because of time limitation. So I'm going to start with this dream. I was actually in this particular lucid dream I was like out for a lucid stroll, which is kind of unusual. I was just kind of like moseying in flight over uh, hills. And all of a sudden, out of, out of me burst, I want to see God. It just, I, I just blurted it out. I had no intention of saying it, it just came out. And as I was like recovering from, uh, you, know, you know, where'd that come from? I came up over a little hill, and there was a vast plain in front of me, just a big, vast, empty plain with one tree in the distance. Just, and I was you know, struck by the singularity of just this one tree, so I, you know, instinctively and naturally flew toward that. And it was a nice tree, majestic and, you know, wide trunk. What kind of tree? You know, I'm not a, I like trees, but, you know, I, you know, I don't know what kind of tree this was, but it was a, a beautiful tree tree and striking and as I got to the tree I was above it uh, you know near the top and I could see the, the tender like spring like branches and there was like a breeze and the, the branches were moving and then they they kind of quivered and opened up and formed a bowl so to speak and I lowered myself into this bowl kind of naturally and and the branches came up behind me and enclosed me in like a cocoon and I was overcome by emotion. I mean, I, I think I wept. It was so intense. And it was an emotion of unconditional love. And uh, knowing myself and the thoughts that have gone through this head of mine and everything, I was quite surprised to know or feel that I was unconditionally loved. And it felt really good. And I woke up feeling really good about that dream. Now the second dream is quite different. In this dream I was skydiving. Now skydiving is a dream sign for me. I went skydiving uh, four times in about 1996 and I quit when I realized I was going to get myself killed. The falling part wasn't hard, but the technicalities of landing safely, I was a moron. So anyway, so skydiving is a dream sign for me and I was skydiving and I realized I must be dreaming 
And when I became lucid, I could have, you know, just stopped falling and, you know, zoomed off, you know, on my way to some other uh, event in the dream. Uh, or I could have pulled and had a dreamed parachute and seen what happened there. But I was, in, I guess, in a risky mood because I made the decision at that point to just keep falling and see what the impact was going to be like. And, uh, you know, dreams are so real, this kind of concerned me. And you have to get used to that if you're going to be a lucid dreamer. If, you're, if you want to learn and have things unfold in your dream, you have to take risks. Because I'm sure the thought crossed my mind, you sure better hope you're dreaming. And uh, so anyway, I didn't open my parachute and I fell and up came the big ball of dirt and I, and I was awaiting the impact and I just kept falling. And I was falling into the earth. Now it got suddenly dark and you know, daylight was gone. I was in the earth and falling into the earth. Now, the, I didn't have much time to reflect on that there was no impact. I suddenly felt this presence of like evil increasing, this, this foreboding, unpleasant sense. And it got worse and more, disgu more disgusting. It got so disgusting I could, I could, I could smell it. And it was, it was awful and I almost decided to wake up. I mean, I wanted to just wrench myself out of this and be safely back in bed. This was nightmarish evil. And yet, I decided, you know, I've gone this far. I know where this is headed. I'm going to see the monarch of hell. I'm going to make the acquaintance of the, the prince of darkness. And, uh, and as I said, I was very apprehensive about it, but I was going with it. I wasn't going to turn back now and wake up. So, anyway, cutting to the chase, I suddenly felt my fall stop. This blackness around me just kind of like condensed beneath me into this uh, black shimmering pool. And I looked into this pool and I saw this countenance looking back. Well, now you know why I love dreams. I've thought about that dream as much as I've thought about my dreams of love. That was meaningful. So anyway, uh, I'll have more dreams to share, uh, completely different than these two. And uh, so un until then, you know, you can look forward to dreams of transcendence and uh, dreams of divine love. Although I kind of secretly hope that you all have at least one dream and meet your own Beelzebub.